Man, we live in such a beautiful world. It doesn't seem to matter wherever Cindy and I go that we find the beauty. We had a little more than a day in Victoria, British Columbia, and it's amazing the beauty that we found. Now, we're going to have a lot more videos coming about our travels from Victoria to Yucalet, Tofino, and Long Beach, and even back home. But before I get there, i got to tell you that I think part of the reason we find so much beauty in our world is because we appreciate it. And when you appreciate the beauty, you see it all around. It doesn't matter if it's in Canada, if it's in the United States, in Caribbean. And even though we haven't been to Africa, Australia, Asia, wherever, I know we would find the beauty wherever we traveled. But not everyone is that way. And that brings me to this video because when Cindy and I returned from our Vancouver Island travels, we were invited to a, a speech about GMOs genetically modified organisms predominantly god genes i guess is how some people put it it's playing god changing things that have been on the planet forever by corporations to suit their needs and their needs are not well more often than not they're based on financial considerations it's kind of like making plants immune to roundup so that you can spray the whole fields with roundup and still have a crop come up that you can sell or creating the so-called Franken-salmon, you know, salmon that are like Frankenstein. They devour everything and grow to a huge size in very short time. Now, there's a lot of people that have concerns about this. You know, on one side, basically what you have is a powerful corporation. Predominantly, it's Monsanto. And we have filmed the March Against Monsanto, which is a global event every year. And on the other side of the equation, you have concerned citizens, predominantly anyone that is concerned about what they're putting into their body, what they're eating. And before you say that, well, you know, the corporations wouldn't put anything out there that wasn't safe or the government wouldn't allow it if it wasn't safe and thoroughly tested. Think about this. When Cindy and I were in Yucalet, one of the things that I filmed was a Coast Guard station. And it was closed down because at one time it was painted with paint that contained lead. Now think about this. Back in the 50s, 40s, 30s, it was widely accepted the use of leaded paint. And in some paints, up to 50% of the content was lead because it made the pigment so vibrant. I mean, the colors were absolutely fantastic. So people painted their houses inside, outside, all around. Uh, kids' toys were p painted with leaded paint. Would you want to live in a house today that had lead paint in it? If you could, because this house was condemned, by the way. But that's not all. Because lead was so pliable, it was used in pipe, in plumbing. So many of the early houses had lead in the plumbing. Would you want your water to be delivered to you right now in pipes that were made out of lead? with what we know today. And this is the important part with what we know today because a lot of the things that were accepted at one time, either we didn't know about it or corporations deliberately tried to deceive. Say the cigarette industry. They deliberately hid the fact that tobacco smoking was harmful. That's why the big lawsuits. But there are so many other products that have been used at one time and uh, are no longer allowed to be used, such as asbestos. Houses were insulated with asbestos. I mean, what an amazing material. It comes in fibers and it uh, won't burn, so you can put it into the walls. Again, you're not even allowed to use it today. But if you knew a house had asbestos in it, would you live in that house? And if you would, well, it's all fine for you. I think most of the people wouldn't want to live in it. We've learned over the decades, the last few decades, that many of the things in plastics are not good for you. And therefore, even storing water in plastic or breathing in the fumes from plastic are harmful. We've seen that 100,000 homes in the United States apparently were uh, built using gyp rock from China that had harmful things in it. All kinds of different things. We learn about it after the fact. So what you got right now is a lot of people that are concerned about GMOs. What is it going to do and how is it going to impact us? Now, of course, corporations have lobbyists. 
lobbyists line up early in the morning to go in and seek out specific politicians and uh, influence their decision. Predominantly, citizens groups, the grassroots groups that are out there trying to find out what's happening, do not have that kind of access either to policymakers, lawmakers, politicians. They do not have the money, the funds. So they are already at a disadvantage. And uh, pretty well, I guess we all know who the politicians listen to, the ones that have the largest purse. So anyway, Cindy and I were out filming the uh, GMO talk, and it is very long. It is very intensive. But it also demonstrates that some of the people coming to these meetings are very passionate because the industry is uh, working very hard to make sure that things don't change, that the grassroots movements don't expand. But they are. In the United States, there are states now that are requiring labeling because even labeling our food, whether it's been made with genetically modified organisms, isn't happening. So there are uh, efforts on the way to get food labeled. There's efforts on the way to have food restricted, more testing done, all kinds of different things. But people are very passionate. And I see nothing wrong with passion on one side when the other side has so much money resources. And I can tell you quite honestly, I think everyone pretty well knows that politicians listen to money. You know, they might uh, stand by and listen to people, but when it comes down to somebody laying down the money for them, that's who they listen to. And finally, what i got to say is that uh, while we were in Yukulat, one of the things that Cindy and I came across was a bunch of bushes. I think it was salmon berries, and I was sitting in the car beside it, and I saw a ladybug, just a simple little ladybug. And I got out of the car to go and film it, and I thought, how cool. And then I started thinking about that, man, in the Okanagan where we live, and there's a lot of agriculture here, and you come in on calm days when there's no wind, and you can see the apple orchards, cherries, everything, the tractors are going, they're spraying their pesticides, herbicides. They're not as strong as what they once used to use, but they're still spraying on a continual basis to control insects. Now, when you control the bad insects, you're also killing the good insects. And you're also taking away the food source for bats, for birds, uh, all different things. So it was a real amazing little thing to see these ladybugs in Yukulat and think that, man, you know, our kids, are they going to know what it's like to see one? Because children love ladybugs all over the world, you know. When there's uh, festivals, they want to be painted up like, you know, when there's face painting, ladybugs. Or at Halloween, there's ladybug costumes. They're just one of those things that people love. And we are losing. We are losing so many things in our world that we have to take a stand. And for Prime Minister Stephen Harper to say that he puts jobs before the environment has got to be one of the stupidest things you can imagine. Because 50 years from now, those jobs won't be around. But if he keeps messing up our environment, then neither will our environment. And if you've seen the images coming out of China, Beijing, what the pollution level is like there, and it has already been shown that the pollution drifts across the oceans on the jet stream, You see the extreme weather we're having. You see the global warming we're having. Sea levels rising. 50 years from now, those fossil fuel jobs will be gone. But so will the environment. And if our stupid government leaders were not putting money into weaponry, like Canada wanting to spend 20, 30, 40 billion or more dollars to buy fighter jets, and not even that many, like we couldn't defend ourselves if any major conflict took uh, place, to buy fighter jets, and were to put in four or five billion dollars into developing clean energy, we could be a world leader at not only creating clean energy, but creating jobs. The European Union just now announced four billion dollars to go into robotics, And they're saying that with a $4 billion investment, 
they're going to be a global leader in the development of new technologies when it comes to robotics. So I ask any Canadian out there, if instead of buying these stupid F-35 fighters that the government is going to be dealing on, we put that money into clean energy, cleaning up the environment, making sure that the next generation has clean environment. Think of the good it would do and how many jobs it would create. That's what leadership is about. Not following the global military industrial complex and talking about wars and destruction continually, whether it's destruction of our resources, of our uh, air, soil, water, whatever, just so that a few oil tycoons can get richer and richer. At least that's the way I see it. Ladybug. I spotted one ladybug on a branch. And then there's a whole bunch of them around. That's another one. That's another one. Man, that's great to see. Predominantly, I believe ladybugs eat a aphids. Cindy, what? get your camera here. Apparently, Victoria, British Columbia just released 50,000 ladybugs downtown for controlling aphids. What an awesome, environmentally friendly way to treat nature and deal with insects that you don't want around. So these are called salmon berries. Apparently an adult ladybug eats about seven aphids and a day. they attract ladybugs. Lots. Like I said, I haven't seen this many ladybugs. Here's another. Salmon berries. With lots of ladybugs. Love it. Absolutely love it.